In today's video, I'm gonna teach you my recipe for my very delicious but nutritious protein chocolate pudding. And I'm sure you're gonna love it. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're in the kitchen now. I'm gonna show you the ingredients that we're gonna use for this, and it's so simple. It's really got two main ingredients, but there are a few others that make this just that bit extra delicious. So without further ado, let's show you the ingredients. Okay, so as you can see here, the primary ingredients is just some good quality, low fat, high protein yogurt. Then you've got some protein powder of choice. Now I'm going with chocolate, obviously, for a chocolate pudding. Um, I use this one, doesn't really matter which one you use, just use one you enjoy. And then we've obviously got unsweetened cocoa powder just to add a bit of that extra um, chocolatey flavor. Of course, we're gonna have a bit of stevia just for some sweetness. And then here is the ingredient for my special protein pudding, which is Cocoa Pops, okay? Adds that bit of extra crunch, bit of extra flavor, bit of extra sweetness, and just makes it seem more like a dessert while still obviously maintaining a good intake and a good nutritional balance. Awesome. So yeah, as I mentioned, the yogurt and the protein powder is really the main kind of bread and butter of this recipe, but then obviously adding a bit of stevia for some sweetness, some cocoa powder for some extra chocolateiness, like I said. And then like, a, uh, like I'm going for the Cocoa Pops, but you can go for any real cereal that you enjoy. It will still add that bit of extra crunch and a bit of extra different texture and a bit, a bit of a different flavor profile, I guess is the right word to give you a bit of extra enjoyment out of your meal. But it doesn't really matter. Just choose what works for you. This is the one we're going with for today. So let's put it all in. Let's show you exactly how much of each ingredient and how to actually make this delicious protein pudding recipe. Okay, so the first step is basically get yourself a set of scales, get yourself a bowl, zero it out, and you're good to go. Okay, so first thing is obviously the yogurt. Now, how much yogurt do we add? Very simply, we add about 250 grams of Greek yogurt. Now, obviously, you can play around with this to find your own different flavors and textures. Everyone using different protein powders, so there will be differences there as well. But generally speaking, I enjoy to go for 250, 252 will be close enough, 250 grams of Greek yogurt. The next step is we add in A scoop of protein powder. I didn't measure it because it doesn't really matter. Just go for a scoop of your chosen protein powder. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can also go up to about 50, 55 grams of protein powder. So a bit more than a scoop. So I usually like to go for a scoop and a half just to give it a bit of extra protein and a bit of extra chocolate flavor. And all we'll do is just get in there and mix it through, okay? Be careful not to make a mess like I'm doing now. Very, very poor work from my end. But it doesn't really matter. Not much protein was lost there. There's always going to be some casualties in the kitchen. Today, it's just a bit of protein powder. Let's mix it all well. You'll be mixing it again soon anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly uniform or not. Just get it all nicely combined to some degree is the main thing here, okay? Just to some degree. Okay, so now that we've got that, what we can do is we zero this out and we're gonna add a bit of stevia. 10 grams, there we go, 11, 10. Then we're gonna add six grams of cocoa powder. There we go, exactly six. I was on the mark today. And we just mix all that through. Now the last ingredient is obviously Cocoa Pops, but we put that in last once this is all nice and combined because it makes it all just a bit easier to mix in and combine in the right way rather than things flying everywhere. And yeah, let's mix it in. As you can see, it's getting a lot more of a richer chocolate look. If you can see that well kind of the, the texture you're going for, for the pudding. Now you can obviously mix in a bit of water if you want. You can add a dash of water if you want it to be a bit more fluid, I guess. I'm not sure what the word is at the top of my head right now, but you can add a bit of flavor, uh, water for that, but I actually don't mind it at this texture right here. And then now what we do is just add in the Cocoa Pops. 
Don't lose any Cocoa Pops. That's where the flavor is, isn't it, right? I um, haven't met anyone yet who doesn't, deep down, like Cocoa Pops, okay? So if you're, if you're someone who doesn't like Cocoa Pops, like I said, you can use any kind of cereal. Chocolate cereal usually works well as well, like something like Aldi chocolate pillows or something like that. Um, you only want a bit of it in there. So like I said, it was 250 grams of of yogurt, it was a scoop and a half of protein powder, six grams of cocoa powder, 10 grams of stevia, and only 25 grams, although I do sometimes go with 20 grams, so 20 to 25 grams of cocoa pops. Combine all that nicely. And as you can see, that is ready to go. Okay, not sure how good it looks like that on camera for you, but trust me, it's looking delicious here and I can't wait to eat this, okay? Done. Now there is an extra step that if you wanna do, you can make it a bit more extra delicious and it's popping it into the fridge for about 30 to 60 minutes just to make it a bit more cooler and a bit more like a pudding and you're good to go, okay? It'll be delicious, but you can eat it right like this and we're gonna go do a taste test now, exactly how it is and tell you what I think. Okay, so I've got my bowl of chocolate deliciousness right here, ready to go, ready to taste test and tell you what I think. Now I already know what this recipe is like, but I know you enjoy seeing me review it. So let's get into it and tell you exactly what this tastes like. Is it a good substitute for normal protein pudding? And then break down the calories and the macros for you. So you know what the nutrition is, because that was the big reason you clicked this video. Without further ado, drum roll please. As good as always, okay? I love this, I'll eat this, I'll eat this just randomly during the day. I'll eat this for dessert, which is what it's intended for. It's supposed to be a macro-friendly, healthy, but delicious alternative to dessert, but yeah. Now, does it taste like normal chocolate pudding? No, but I'll say it time and time again. As long as you can replicate the flavor to a point where you enjoy it and it feels like a treat, you're winning, okay? You're winning. And it's never gonna taste like a normal thing, but that's not the point. Enjoy the normal thing. Within calories, you can allocate it. That's the beauty of flexible dieting. That's why I use it for my approach. But sometimes you just can't always be eating chocolate pudding. This is a great alternative. A bowl of this will give you close to that, you know, I'll break it out soon, but it's a big protein hit in itself. So it'll help you hit your protein targets for the day while still getting you to feel like you had a chocolate fix at the end of a good hard day and at the end of a delicious dinner. You eat this, you're set. Awesome. So you're now thinking, okay, good. It's a good substitute, it tastes great, but what's the nutrition like? Because you clicked this video wanting to know what's a good macro-friendly alternative. Well, here it is, okay? So as you can see, it's got about 480 calories, about 65 grams of protein. So it's a big hit of protein for a dessert. It's got about 37 grams of carbs and about seven grams of fat. So it's pretty macro-friendly, okay? It'll give you a bit of carbohydrates there. It'll give you a tiny bit of fat, it'll give you a whopping 65 grams of protein, and all under 500 calories. Now, like I said, the Cocoa Pops is optional, so you can cut out the Cocoa Pops and cut down the calories to 300 and something. Or you can leave the Cocoa Pops in there and adjust the other things, or adjust them all. It doesn't really matter, you can go half a recipe if you just want a bit of a protein. Look, this is a big bowl of it. You can go for just a small bowl of this, and it'll be less calories. It is adaptable, but it's definitely macro-friendly. Because I can assure you, a bowl this big of normal protein pudding, way more calories, way less protein, way more fats and carbs. So this is pretty well balanced meal in itself when you consider all the other alternatives. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, really hope you enjoy this recipe. I want you now to go give it a go. You probably have some of these ingredients already ready to rumble, but if you don't, go buy some, give it a go, create these this recipe. Post it on your Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Tag me at The Climate Dietitian. I wanna see your creations. Let me hear, comment below whether you like this recipe or whether you didn't like it. Cause you know, it's good to take the positive and the negative critiques. But yeah, really hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. But before we wrap up today, remember, hit the like button if you enjoy this recipe. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you can stay in the loop with these recipes. And as always, stay classy. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.